Hello and welcome to another career education class. I am so grateful that we are here learning together on the traditional unceded ancestral Stolo territory of the Palau, Chilquic and Samath peoples. Today we are continuing our look at digital identity and footprint, online safety and next steps. What is a digital footprint specifically? A digital footprint is a trail of data you create when you use the internet. It includes the websites we visit, posts we like, share, or comment on, who you follow, companies you order from, information you submit to online services. Even your search history is part of your digital footprint. Your digital footprint paints a picture of who you are. This next video shows how you leave your digital footprint behind. So now that we know all of this, we need to talk about building a positive digital identity. Let's start by talking about posting online and what kind of things we should and should not post online. Basically, if you wouldn't say it in real life to someone's face, don't post it. Or if you wouldn't want it said about you, don't say it online in any form. You have to be careful about too much information, also known as oversharing on the internet. You don't need to share your relationship status. This will change and really your relationship status is for people that are close to you, that know you and support you. You don't need to share your fights with your friends or family. You don't need to share what you ate for breakfast or lunch or dinner unless you know it's something really special. You don't need to share problems at your part-time job. Definitely should never share work problems online. And you need to avoid complaining online because you want to really build a positive picture of yourself. And you really need to curate your photos and reels. Show your best side and don't show anything risky or risque. Things that you can be judged on later in life when you're trying to apply for any special programs or jobs and those sorts of things. And only tag others with their permission and only for positive things. And check, but don't rely on your privacy settings. Nancy Willard's Internet Law of Predictable Consequences says, the more embarrassing, outrageous, or damaging the material you post or send privately, the more likely it will become very public and be seen by people who will judge you badly. Alternatively, a digital footprint that provides an excellent demonstration of a student's skills, interests, personal values, can contribute in a very effective way to success in making friends and gaining positive opportunities. Here are some suggested tasks you can use to look at your digital footprint. You can Google yourself. Depending on the browser you're using or how you're Googling yourself, you'll want to use an incognito or private window so that you can see what others see when they Google you. There are directions for this in your assignment. You need to check your privacy settings. These need to be checked regularly because privacy settings and regulations change. And sometimes you might get a notification where you have to click on agree, but most people don't actually read them. So you want to go in and check and see what the latest version of the privacy settings you've agreed to actually say. Deactivate and delete useless accounts. 
Clean up your social media. Delete any posts that would reflect negatively on you or anyone else. Ask your friends to remove tags, especially if they are tagging anything questionable. Your digital dossier or reputation matters. No matter if you're in grade 9, 10, 11, or 12, you need to think about what you're posting now and how it will affect you in the future. What would a college or university recruiter think? What would a future business recruiter think? You can make your digital presence work for you by using your time online to get creative and to create a positive digital footprint. You can write posts or even a blog to promote positive things you are doing without giving away every where and when detail. You can create posts that show volunteerism, leadership, sports involvements and initiative without including specific locations, team names and close up pictures. As you shift up into higher grades, you can begin to be a little more specific when you're really targeting those recruiters. But at this point in time, you want to stay fairly generic and anonymous. Create a video to teach others something or to showcase something positive. And share positive messages or important and factual articles that reflect your interests. Basically, you want to think before you post. We have a culture of sharing and every individual has the freedom to share, but you need to only share what is yours to share, what builds a positive digital presence and identity. Consider the possible harmful effects of oversharing and internet privacy. Always think when you're posting, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? We all have bad days and we need to seek out support when we're having those bad days. But ideally, you will seek out those supports from people that you are with. And if you need to reach out to somebody that's long distance, you could phone them. Do something more personal rather than posting it out to the whole world. Now, at your age, you need to balance building a positive digital identity with personal safety. So I want you to think about why you should consider how well you know someone before sharing with them. And what if it was through a text or online messaging? How would that affect your thinking? We've mostly talked about your posts, but many of you are in online chats of various kinds. So let's think about those when we're responding to these questions. And you can pause the video now while your teacher facilitates this discussion. Thank you. Here is an example of someone we will call Sarah. Sarah loves taking pictures and posting them to Instagram. A few months ago, she noticed Alex, East underscore East West 13, liked several of her photos and commented, you are so talented. Sarah was flattered. Then she received a private message from Alex, East West 13, asking if she was a professional photographer or if she wanted to be one someday. Sarah responded that it was her dream to be one when she grew up. Now, they talk a lot through private messaging. Sarah also posts comments on Alex East West 13's photos, which are mostly of random objects and nature scenes. Last week, Alex East West 13 asked if she would post more selfies because I think you are beautiful. Alex East West 13 also messaged her a cell number so she could send more personal pictures. Just don't tell anyone I gave you this, he commented. Some of these comments it's started to give Sarah a red flag feeling. When something happens that makes you feel uncomfortable, worried, sad, or anxious, we can say these are red flags. So imagine options for the, how the situation could be handled. Come up with as many ideas as possible, then choose which option might lead to the most positive outcome. We're going to pause the video while your teacher facilitates this discussion. What should Sarah do? Thanks. How many of these did you come up with? Change the subject, make a joke, or say, I don't want to talk about this. Log off or quit. Unfriend the person or block them. Create a new account or report the other user. Never plan a face-to-face -face meeting with someone you don't know unless you take along a parent or guardian. Ask a trusted adult for advice or help. 
if you feel unsure or uncomfortable in any situation. This is a situation that could become problematic. Sarah is making good choices if she's choosing some of these strategies. This is super important because in Canada and all over the world, online grooming and personal safety is becoming an increasingly more serious issue with the increased use of online chatting. Let's see what's happening in Canada based on a report that came out in September 2021. In the past year, cybertip.ca analysts have classified more than 645 reports as online luring, which is an attempt made by offenders to sexually exploit or harm children. 48% involved victims 14 to 17 years old. That's your age. 22% of incidents occurred on Snapchat. 23% occurred on Instagram, Facebook, or Facebook Messenger. 12% of incidents occurred on Discord. How many of these are you on? And we are not trying to say that you shouldn't be on these. We're saying that you need to be careful when you are on these and watch out for red flags. So online groomers have a bunch of strategies that are commonly used. They often will pretend they're a peer or claim that they have a mutual friend with you. They will use flattery and compliments and support you. They might promise gifts, money, tablets, drugs, alcohol. One strategy they will use is pitting the parents against the child. Like they'll say, your parents are too strict or your parents don't understand you. They may ask for the exchange of sexual pictures to make the victim more comfortable in sending pictures and videos in return. They might take pictures with or without the child's knowledge while live streaming. This is often followed by use of extortion to control the child and or threatening to share the material unless the child produces additional sexual images or video. Threats, intimidation, and harassment are even used. Often things will start small and build up to the dangerous point. It's really important that you keep private information private. Many of you are really good at having sort of anonymous tag names that you use when you're on these different chats and servers. You can walk away from strangers online, especially when someone is being overly nice. Think personal safety. You don't want to just give away your locations, holidays, over narrate your life patterns. Someone shouldn't know that you go to the dog park every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 p.m. You don't need to make all those kinds of posts. If you're going away on holidays, you don't announce it to the world until you're back and then you can share a few pictures because otherwise everyone knows that your house is empty. Carefully select and curate what you share. Don't tell a stranger, even if you've been chatting online forever and they're your online friend, what you wouldn't tell a stranger in real life. If you have an assignment to complete that uh, covers a lot of this material, you need to make sure that you hand it in. And that's it for today's lesson. We'll see you next time.